everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Xenonauts. Not to be confused with XCOM Enemy Unknown, which was obviously the 2012 reboot of the XCOM series, officially from Firaxis and 2K Games. Xenonauts is inspired by the original XCOM UFO Defense, which was a classic PC strategy title uh, from the 90s. Uh, and it's in Steam Early Access right now. I can't remember if it's an alpha or beta. I always get my letters confused when it comes to the Greek alphabet. Uh, but it's available on Steam right now, Early Access, for 20 bucks. So I played a little bit of this so far. It's, uh, it's similar superficially to XCOM Enemy Unknown, but it also has a lot of different mechanics. I've only spent about an hour and a half, maybe two hours with it so far. Uh, so there's probably going to be a lot of stuff that is going by me, so I'm not necessarily doing this as a definitive, like, should you buy this now? This is more of a, like, awareness, like, if you want to get in on this, if you're a big fan of the old XCOM games, this is now available. By the way, I, I know I'm going to aggravate people a little bit with this video, because I did not actually play... Uh, the original XCOM games that came out, I was more of a, you know, Super Nintendo as opposed to a PC gamer when I was eight years old and did not have the luxury necessarily of playing on multiple platforms. But in any case, we're going to load into our existing game here. I played a ton, if you're not familiar, I played a ton with um, uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown. I, that was one of my favorite games of last year. I believe I actually made it the, or I named it my second favorite game of last year in the end. Uh, so I, I do have some kind of a basis for playing this game in general. Anyway, I'm just going to pause it for a second. So... Uh, this is my main base over here in North America, Docking HQ, because I am a 12-year-old boy. And this is the interface that we're kind of dealing with for the most part. It, it, it takes a bit of a different idea than the original, or not the original, but XCOM Enemy Unknown, which kind of put you inside of the facility and you can move around as you uh, saw fit. You can kind of do the same thing here, uh, but for the most part you're looking at this kind of like Paradox or DEFCON style map. And, you know, if you're familiar with the gameplay of XCOM Enemy Unknown, it's going to be fairly easy to kind of describe for you what is going on here. So I'm going to resume game, and time is just passing. It's passing incredibly slowly. It might as well basically be paused uh, when we play on speed one, which is good, because uh, why don't I show off some of the stuff we can do right here. So we only have our one base right now. This is Docking HQ uh, in North America. And, you know, again, if you're familiar with Enemy Unknown, we can uh, construct new buildings, for example. So we have a little bit of money. Why don't we construct another, uh, um, let me think about this. Why don't we construct another workshop, which will allow us to create more technology faster. So we can slot in a workshop here, or workshop here maybe, and it'll take 15 days to complete. And it cost us something like $60,000 or something. Or, no, wait, $90,000. $100,000? Yes, okay. Um, there's also our research screen. This is where we kind of assign scientists to research. Unlike Enemy Unknown, we can have scientists working on multiple projects at once, and sh uh, multiple projects at once, I should say, and we can uh, adjust, you know, the number of scientists on each project as we see fit to uh, speed up or slow down uh, the speed at which they, the, these things will be discovered here. Uh, similarly, you know, the things like plasma pistol and alien alloys, we only got the ability to research those because I recovered them from missions that I've done with, like, ground missions with uh, the Strike Force. There is a substantial aerial combat aspect to this game as well. Uh, in any case, you know, you can see our training menu here with our Strike Force. Uh, so this is our, like, existing uh, force. Uh, I'm not sure if we can actually recruit more people. I haven't had the uh, requirement to do so. I guess we can recruit more scientists, technicians, and soldiers here if we so choose. Uh, for a little bit of extra money, but for now, this is okay, I've got enough people. Some of them are wounded, uh, some of them have other status effects that are not going well, but uh, I've only done one mission with these guys so far, but I did play uh, a little bit off-camera and totally got fucked up, so, <laughs> like, I, I restarted the mission. I'm playing on the normal mode right now, by the way. Uh, this is, like, armament, I suppose. We could, uh, you know, change the armor, or the weapon that our people have, uh, and, and so on and so forth. There's a lot of, it seems like this gets a little bit more complex uh, when it comes to the customization aspects than something like Enemy Unknown did. Enemy Unknown, from talking to people who have played a lot of the original XCOM, kind of seems like baby's first XCOM, and I don't mean that in a derisive way. Again, I love that game, and I found it fairly complicated because, you know, maybe I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to these games, or to put it more politely, it was the first one of them that I played. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, this seems to let you get a little bit deeper, shall we say. So, if we just look at our map right now, you can see that we have um, Charlie 1. This is like my uh, aerial transport that transports my strike force. I've just completed a mission over here in uh, Asia. So, he's going to come back, and or this aircraft is going to come back, and then come back to Docking HQ. And hopefully, I'm just going to speed things up a little bit here. Uh, hopefully, we will fairly soon encounter something. Maybe we'll encounter a UFO that is just kind of like hanging out somewhere in North America. By the way, that circle, I believe, represents our uh, radar array. Let me see this for a second. Civilian autopsy. This is the first time I've had an autopsy here. But again, if you've played um, Enemy Unknown, a lot of these prompts seem fairly familiar. Um... So I guess we, we just got an automatic autopsy by recovering this corpse. Beautiful. Uh, this goes into our Xenopedia, which is our, you know, encyclopedia, basically, for alien life. Uh, I don't think we have too much information on anything yet, but that's okay. 
Okay, so we also get information on the Light Scout UFO. Uh, we didn't get... I like this, that it keeps constantly hitting you up with um, new projects available. So if you... On law, if you find an artifact or something, or some kind of evidence, uh, and there's something that you can actually kind of, you know, pull on a thread and start getting more information about it, it'll tell you, which is nice. Um, that confused me a little bit when I first started playing Enemy Unknown, but in any case, I'm, I'm going to talk about Enemy Unknown probably a lot throughout the course of this video, because, you know, they say talk about what you know, and I know that a little bit more. Uh, so this is kind of the, one of the two kind of random instances I've encountered a lot of in the early game of Xenonaut so far. So, this is a, a UFO, and you know, in, in Enemy Unknown, you would oftentimes just be like, oh, there's been an alien crash landing somewhere. Sometimes you would shoot them down yourself and then start a mission that way. Uh, but oftentimes they'd just be like, just send your ground troops here. That was really good for tutorialization. Uh, in this one, you're more likely, or you spend a lot more time, it seems, shooting down these UFOs and then uh, going to do the ground strike missions yourself. So we'll probably do a little bit of aerial combat, we'll do one ground mission, and then we'll finish off the video, is the way I, I envision this working. So we're going to try to intercept this. Uh, we have a couple of planes here, so why don't we send out Condor 2. Might be able to send out Condor 2 and Condor 1 uh, to try to uh, catch this UFO. So let's speed up time. No, we only sent out one, I guess. And we did find him. Oh no, we did send out two. Awesome. And we will uh, engage. Sometimes they'll get out of your radar range and you won't be able to find them. You can send your, like, your aircraft on patrol to see if they come back. We can just tail them until they're over land, which is actually... Uh, this has been recommended for me because if I just shoot the UFO down, that doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, because I won't be able to do a ground strike mission to recover any uh, artifacts from them or any technology. So maybe instead we'll tail them until they're over land so when we shoot them down, we can actually go there and engage in a mission. So let's try that. Tail over land. He has escaped to space! Alright, that's real shitty. That's okay, though. There, there'll be another one that'll come back before too long. At least I scared him away before anything terrible could happen. Now, uh, in terms of how the game kind of progresses after this point, you know, in, in Enemy Unknown, uh, there was the panic meter, which kind of showed how much of the world, or the, the confidence of the other nations in the world. As far as I know, there's nothing like that now. So I don't actually know what the failure conditions are. I've mostly just been playing this on a very micro level. Local forces have downed a small alien craft. They are requesting Xenonaut assistance to secure the vessel. Turns out I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Here's a mission where we've just been told that there is a, uh, a, a strike team that we are able to deploy. That's fine. Uh, we'll, we'll do some aerial combat a little bit later. So we're going to go out to, um, you know, I, I'm going to probably make myself seem pretty geographically ignorant. I believe that's Papua New Guinea and that's New Zealand down here. But, you know, beats me. Uh, let's engage them here. So we are going to have uh, kind of a work in progress loading screen. This is a good segue into mentioning that everything that I show off here is subject to change. This is very much uh, a work in progress, even though it's available for purchase on Steam for 20 bucks, which I think is a totally reasonable price for a game of this scope and magnitude. Um, it, it's still being worked on constantly, so there, there could be bugs, there could be, um, again, work in progress kind of shots uh, or, or graphics, etc. Let me see here. Um, reconnaissance suggests the alien vessel has landed on damage. It will have a full strength crew, so expect heavy resistance. The primary objective in this mission is to capture extraterrestrial artifacts, so take care when breaching the UFO to avoid destroying valuable technology. Okay. So graphically, this is very much more true to the original than Enemy Unknown was. Enemy Unknown uh, is a much more, as of yet at least, or as of the time of this recording, Enemy Unknown is a much more polished experience. That being said, uh, this seems like a strategically deep experience that is likely to appeal to fans of the original. So, there's a couple of things we need to note here. You know, this is, these are our staff members. Um, they're not all fully healed from the last mission that I did. Some of them are, but uh, a couple of them are not in a great situation. But that's okay, because we actually do have... Uh, we should have some medics with us here if I go uh, check out the backpack on some of these dudes. Also, they, they must be like UN workers or something, because they have the goofiest looking uniforms. But anyway, we're going to try to heal... Um, who is he? Yeah, Simon Blackler's not looking so good. Uh, so why don't we try to heal him? So we're just going to um, crank up our mouse here uh, to heal as much as we possibly can. Sure, there we go. So we're just going to slap him over the face, and then he should be in a much better position, as you can see. So every unit has a specific amount of TU, and I actually don't know what TU is, so I'm just going to call them action points. Maybe it's like time usages or something. Um, so basically, every character gets a certain amount of TU, and this dictates uh, how far they can move. So for example, if I move here, you can see that I can accomplish that, get behind this van, and still have 13 TU remaining. In contrast to Enemy Unknown, where I believe you can move and then shoot no matter what, as long as an enemy was in range at the end of your movement, this is a little bit different. You have to have some TU available uh, at the end of your turn in order to shoot. And in this case, this is where the slider comes in. Uh, and it's really important, because we can say, okay, there, there's a few different kinds of shots we can take. We can take a normal shot or a snapshot. It depends on the class of the character. Maybe we just want to move and still be able to take a snapshot. Uh, this will show us, like where we can do that. So if it shows up yellow, that means we won't be able to take a shot after we land there. Uh, so instead, uh, 
you know, maybe we're just going to try to move this guy the other way. So this is a good way to kind of manage your action points, uh, which is absolutely goddamn essential, considering that uh, you need to use those action points to shoot. So we're just going to move our squad out here. The other thing that makes this a little bit more complicated, as you might expect, is the fact that we have... Um, uh, a lot of squad members versus XCOM Enemy Unknown, where typically you started with uh, four, five, or six. Uh, in this case, we, we are already with uh, seven, and maybe we'll be able to get more later, but don't quote me on that. So uh, I'm just going to start moving out here. Again, this is only the second ever ground mission I've ever done here. Let's get this guy his um, gun back. It's only the second ground strike mission that I've ever done here. Uh, so if I F up miserably, I apologize. This guy has no more action points left with which to move. Let's get this guy out here a little bit. So I'm just doing some reconnaissance basically here at the start. Uh, putting my uh, characters out here. So if I encounter some aliens, then we will be able to take them out hopefully. Oh, we have an alien shooting at our van. So we now have one uh, in vision here. I hope that hidden movement screen is going to be changed to something that actually shows the aliens moving around. Maybe that's my, again, UFO or enemy unknown bias showing. Uh, I'm just going to come out here, and we do have vision on the aliens. So you can see here, now if I mouse over, we can see our percentage chance of hitting them. Uh, we could also maybe use a grenade. So um, we could throw a grenade here if we choose, and that might be likely to kill him. But I'd rather just uh, get the corpse, basically. But this guy's also uh, fairly hurt. So let me see what we've got in our belts here. This is, uh, in all likelihood, some kind of frag grenade. Oh, no, that, that's in his belt. Okay, my mistake. Let's return to the battlefield here. Um, how far can we throw this? There's a 15% chance of it hitting if we throw? That seems crazy. Uh, but an 18% chance if we shoot. Let me think about this for a second. How far could we walk and still be able to shoot a normal shot? We've already moved a little bit on this turn, so I... Oh, basically one square. How far can we walk and still be able to do a snapshot? We could go all the way over to here and still be able to snapshot. That gives us an 80% chance to hit, so uh, I'm not happy about that, actually. Uh, what if we use a grenade? Hmm. I'm just going to try to go for the shot here. So again, it, it's of the utmost importance. That was a terrible shot, Vladimir Bogdanov. I'm not happy with you. Uh, in terms of, that's a, you know, 15% chance for, uh, from afar is pretty good, but let's... See how close we can get while still doing an aim shot here. This is the main thing that, that changes uh, Xenonauts versus Enemy Unknown, is having to manage your action points to still be able to shoot the enemy. So he's suppressed, which I believe means um, he's going to duck behind cover, but also at the same time, like, he's going to suffer some aim, aim penalties or something. Uh, okay, we're going to have to probably just be able to take a normal shot, unfortunately. Um, do we have any percent chance? 16 percent chance. That's not so bad. Oh, you shot your own dude in the leg, you asshole! That can happen, by the way. This dude is probably pretty pissed off about that, but uh, in any case, let's send another dude back here. Uh, let's send our sniper like as far back as he can go. We're probably going to get hit here. Uh, but yes, the main thing that separates this from uh, Enemy Unknown is that you do have to be very, very cognizant uh, of managing your own uh, action points, because if you run out of action points, it doesn't matter if you're in range of the alien, because you're not going to be able to shoot them. That was the, the, the main thing that gave me kind of a, a, a pain in the ass right off the start. Okay, there's obviously permadeath on our dudes, uh, so one of our guys just died here. That was Vladimir Bogdanov. Oh, do we have another alien up here? We've got more hidden movement happening. There will be civilians, by the way, uh, and this will dictate uh, kind of how much, it, like saving those civilians will dictate how much money we get for completing a mission. So this is our sniper. I want to make sure that he's able to take an aimed shot, if possible, he can only really move one square and still be able to take an aimed shot. What about a normal shot? He should be able to move all the way over to here. Maybe he'll have a higher percentage chance. I have noticed as well uh, that it really seems like uh, the percentages are substantially lower. Uh, and remember, I'm playing this on normal mode. I don't know if the percentages actually change as you get... Um, this guy will be able to take a normal shot from here, so let's try that. I don't know if the percentages change whether you're playing on easy... Oh my god, did you shoot your dude in the leg again? I swear to god! Um, uh, for the third time. I don't know if the percentages change versed, uh, based on whether you're playing it on easy, normal, or hard. Uh, but I have found it very, very difficult. Oh, there's no... This is the edge of the map. I should not be moving here. Um, I, I find it very, very difficult. I've never, as far as I can recall, uh, gotten into a situation where I had like a 60% chance or higher of getting a, a hit. It's always been, uh, you know, you have like a... 10% chance or a 20% chance. So I, I've mismanaged my squad a little bit here, and I apologize for that. Uh, but we're going to end our turn and get that Counter-Strike visual. These aliens, by the way, have goddamn beautiful accuracy. At the very least, though, I, I think I'm confident in saying in the hour and a half or two hours I've played of um, Xenonauts so far that it is a substantially more punishing experience than Enemy Unknown, at least on uh, default difficulty. Like, obviously... Uh, Enemy Unknown, you could you could tweak the difficulty. You could play on Iron Man, uh, or, you know, Realistic or Insane. I forget what the mode was called, but, um... 
you know, th this has been a, a much more nightmarish scenario here for me. And I mean that in a positive way. It might seem like I mean that in like, oh, I'm being a big baby about it. But in all actuality, I, I, I like that a lot. I like that this game's more punishing. Uh, I My thoughts on Enemy Unknown were originally pretty good, but they got even better once I started... Um, maybe I can shoot from here? Nah, I can maybe take a shot from here, but I'll probably end up hitting my dude, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, because uh, he's in my way. Um, what about this guy? How far can we get him out here? Uh, but yeah, my, my thoughts on Enemy Unknown got a lot more positive once I started playing the game on harder difficulties or, you know, if we're speaking... Oh, I didn't even realize that guy had a shot left. Beautiful! We didn't die. Uh, let's end our turn. We are not behind cover, which is really scary. I, again, I'm getting so scatterbrained here. My thoughts on Enemy Unknown improved when I played the game on harder and harder difficulties, so I can definitely appreciate where uh, Xenonauts is coming from here. Matthew Phillips, not in a great position. Um, I don't know if people are able to heal themselves. Uh, so what I'm going to do, uh, don't shoot yourself in the head, please. You can definitely deliberately shoot your own teammates, uh, which might become in, in handy later if they end up being able to be, like, psycho-controlled or something. Um, but anyway, let, let's take our um, healing ability here. We can do uh, 49 for 30 HP. It's weird that you just kind of punch him in the face, but again, I assume some of these are, are like, work in progress uh, animations. And we're, I guess we're going to come down here. This looks where the, like it's where the rest of the meat on the level is. Uh, and we'll get this over here. What is in his... Oh, this is on the ground. Okay, I was like, what is in this dude's uh, uh, backpack here? It looks like he had a dead body. Can we take it with us? No, unfortunately. We can take the grenades, though, I, I guess. Maybe? No? Can we put them in our belt? No. Okay, because we've already got ammunition. I don't know. So this is kind of interesting. I actually did not notice this until earlier. Uh, but I guess you, if someone dies, you can pick up the stuff that you find on the ground. Or maybe you can't. Maybe it doesn't work at all. It looks like I just dropped some ammo for literally no reason. Anyway, you try to, like, walk out here or something. I've given him a shotgun. Oh, maybe that's why he can't pick it up, because I gave him the shotgun by accident. Okay, th let me go back um, to what's going on here. We want to pick up... We want to equip the rifle. No, we put the shotgun on the ground, equip the rifle. Why, why can't you equip the rifle, my friend? Maybe because he's out of action points? I, I have no idea. Whatever. His turn's over. We'll, we'll deal with him in a second and just keep moving behind cover. Again, I'm far from, you know... Greatest XCOM player in the world, that, that's definitely true. Uh, despite beating Enemy Unknown, it was uh, an uphill battle. So when it comes to my gameplay, believe me, I understand that there's uh, criticisms that can abound here. Uh, because it's not necessarily the kind of game that I grew up playing. So I, I'm still in a, a learning process here. So, where's this dude who sucks? It's this guy right here, he's got nothing in his hands. Please tell me I can equip him with something. Ah, there we go. Alright. My major complaint uh, about the interface, now we can, it must have just taken action points to do this then. My main complaint about the game so far is uh, related to the interface. Can I take this body? No. Um, that's something that the the developers, when they sent me the code, told me is, is very much... They wanted it noted that the interface is a work in progress. I think that is a very smart idea to note that. Uh, because as of right now, this is my major problem with the game. Is that sometimes when I want to do something, it just takes me a, a little bit... It's just less intuitive than I would like it to be, maybe. Now, there is a manual that comes included with the game, a digital-style manual. Um, that being said, I would rather not read a 60-page manual. I would rather there be at least a little bit of in-game tutorialization, which there isn't really right now. Again, that's not uncommon for games that are still in development to, to not have uh, standalone tutorials. I'm, I'm totally okay with that, um, but I would ideally, in the future, love to see that come about. Now, these ground strike missions have had a tendency to be fairly long. That might also be because I'm just not very good at them, uh, but uh, I, I have spent a lot of time uh, on these so far, typically like, you know, maybe upwards of half an hour on each one. So th this might be uh, a little bit on the longer side uh, of a let's look at. Oh, we can now see an alien. What I do like is your dude stops when you see an alien. This is not gonna be a half hour mission if I can actually see the um, uh, aircraft there. So I'm gonna try to save enough for a snapshot and I'm gonna get behind cover here. Can I still shoot him? 4% chance, that's fine by me. Well, at least maybe suppress him or something. It obviously did not work the way I intended, but that's okay. So now we start sending dudes over here. Um, you might as well just stay behind cover for now. Can that guy, he can almost make it there. Let's put him here instead. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have any chance of killing the dude on this turn. Uh, or killing that alien on this turn. Typically there have been, um, you know, three to four aliens. Per, uh, per Strike Force mission so far. I, I'm imagining that's going to ramp up difficulty as things move along. That's really... Oh my god, are you kidding me? That's really my favorite thing about XCOM is the way that things get increasingly difficult, but it's not really uh, done in the normal way. It's kind of just like... They, they don't expressly tell you that things are going to get more difficult. It's like, you just better learn, motherfucker. Because uh, if you don't, uh, you're going to find yourself outpaced pretty quickly. And also, I really cannot afford... 
uh, to continue losing uh, my strongest dudes here. Why can I not shoot? Oh, because it's burst fire. Okay, so let's go to single shot and see if we can hit him here. Again, uh, our, our aim is really bad. I wonder if they uh, get better with the aim uh, as you get further and further along in the campaign, because these are still, I guess, untrained soldiers. Uh, and again, I, I believe it's valuable that we have him suppressed, but at the same time, it's kind of shitty that I have a 0% chance of, of getting that shot to work, but I still took it regardless, just because, uh, again, the, the possibility of suppressing him is, I guess, a little bit more valuable. 2% chance. we got to switch to... Oh, we can't actually do uh, non-burst fire with this guy, because he's got the machine gun. I missed you earlier, shotgun man. You won't be able to get a hit here, I'm assuming. Where's the other alien? Oh, shit. Okay. Can this guy get a shot on anybody? 0%, 0%. Okay, and he doesn't have the AP for it anyway. Or TU, sorry. Uh, we might actually end up losing, like, the majority of our squad on this mission. I hope that's not the case, but we'll see. That was, um, some interesting shots there that luckily missed. Uh, do we have our sniper, or did, was our sniper one of the ones who died? That is a good question. In the meantime, this guy should be able to take a burst shot. 12% chance. You know what? Sure. Did... It's worth it for the benefit of being able to stand still. He did hit with one of those, I think. How about this guy? It's, it, he can do a burst fire as well with an 11% chance to hit. I'm not sure if that's 11% per shot or 11% total, but that's okay. What is his 5% chance? I guess this is like a heavy, uh, so he's got to get closer to the enemy to be able to do damage, maybe. How far can he move? He can move out to here. He's still undercover from the last enemy, so that's okay. Oh, good. One of those did hit, so we got lucky there. As low as the percentages might be, in my experience so far, I'm not going to say that the developers don't understand, like, probability or something, but in my, uh, experience so far, the shots have landed a little bit more, f like, frequently than I would have anticipated they would, uh, given the, um, the very limited chances of it seeming like we're going to hit one. For example, right there. And again, I'm not sure if that alien just died, uh, because sometimes the camera can be a little bit wonky. I'm not sure if there's a way to rotate the actual camera angles. David Hemingway is bleeding from one wound and has taken one damage. That's not so bad, but uh, we should probably get him healed up if possible. So who's got the... Uh, Matthew Phillips has a med pack, I believe. So let's drag that on top of him and return to battlefield. And then we'll um, click on this. Again, this, this is taking me a little while to learn the interface here. Just smash him over the head, and he should feel a little bit better. And then, you know what? Daniel Campbell, who was the guy who was actually uh, hurt recently, I think. We can just go uh, give him the med pack and have him do exactly the same thing to Matthew Phillips, who was also fairly hurt here. So let's um, try to get the mouse over the right position. Uh, use as much as we can there. Beautiful. All right. Now everybody switch. Oh, he's out of med pack juice now. Uh, that's unfortunate. But we'll put this back here. Return to Battlefield. How about this guy? Does he have... Oh, he has a ton left. Um, well, probably not a ton if I end up getting hit more. But anyway, return to Battlefield. We'll end the turn for now. We just took the one turn to kind of buff ourselves up a little bit. There will probably be... Oh, wait. I didn't touch David Hemingway at all. My mistake. That was maybe the wrong person to hit. Uh, I'm just going to continue moving out here a little bit. I know it's basically suicide to not have your guys behind cover. Uh, but what can I say? I'm a bad dude who doesn't play by the rules and isn't afraid of anything. Uh, why don't you come out here, and we'll send this dude, uh, maybe over here. Where he's not gonna really get behind cover, but that's okay. Um, and we'll send this guy out here, sure. Uh, so we don't see anybody yet, but there's probably some aliens inside this UFO, if I had to guess. And that's okay. And to talk about my impressions of this, like, ground strike stuff from, uh, you know, like a meta standpoint, like, how, how does this compare to Enemy Unknown? It's fine. It, it, it takes some getting used to, uh... Oh, there's a civilian over here. Okay. It takes some getting used to, uh, but it, it works. Like, it, it's totally... Oh, we can cause ourselves to crouch as well. I didn't notice that until just now. I thought that just indicated whether or not we were crouching. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, like I said, there, there's a learning curve here, and perhaps a learning curve that is a little bit longer than the learning curve associated with Enemy Unknown. That's not a deal breaker, though. This is definitely uh, an interesting... Oh, there's a power plant over there. Uh, an interesting kind of variation on the theme of... of Enemy Unknown. And I understand, you know, I'm not trying to say Enemy Unknown was the originator of this or anything like that. Oh, that's not good. Um, all I'm saying is that that's where my experience comes from. So uh, that's why I'm using that as a point of reference so frequently. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it, it works totally fine. And I, I, you know what? I dig the visuals as well. I realize that they look a little bit simplistic in all likelihood um, relative to uh, some other games, uh, you know, Enemy Unknown specifically, to uh, say that for the 50th time. Uh, but uh, I, I like it nonetheless. I think it looks clean and crisp, and the animations are surprisingly good, uh, given the kind of lo-fi nature of the graphics. So this civilian, I don't know if we just, like, come over to him and say hello or something. 
uh, and, and he'll be with us, so we should probably send a couple dudes up here to deal with this uh, alien threat. Uh, and after we kill this last, I know I shouldn't say last, but after we kill this alien, we might be done with this mission, which would be awesome. I'll, I'll take that opportunity to show off some um, aerial combat stuff, which makes up the other bulk of the gameplay. Wow, that dude hates crates! What's your problem? Okay, this civilian, he's looking a little bit happier about things now. Uh, David Hemingway is not doing so hot, but that's okay. Uh, what do we have here? This guy's got a rifle. What are his odds of hitting? Zero percent! How is that possible? Oh, maybe you can't see past the, uh, the spacecraft here. What about now? 11%, that's better. All right, we did manage to hit him there once, which is good. How about this guy, does this guy have a shotgun? No, he has a rifle too. Um, how far away can we put him? Maybe here? And, oh, it's, what do you mean he's gonna hit his teammate? That's real silly. Um, sure, we'll put him here and he'll be able to do a snapshot at least. With 19%, that's pretty good. Only one single shot, but, or 24% actually. There we go, we managed to kill him. Uh, that may be the end of the mission. I seem to have encountered a, a freeze here, which means that it's probably just loading into the end of mission screen. Beautiful! So you can see how we did. We made $60,000 there in sales, I suppose, from selling the uh, alien plasma pistols, I suppose. We don't have actually a, um, an opportunity to uh, choose what we sell, I guess, but that, maybe that doesn't matter. Uh, two Xenonaut casualties, one surviving civilian, one civilian killed. All right. Uh, we also got a Sazen non-combatant corpse, but we did lose some people. Uh, a corporal and a sergeant were killed in action, which is unfortunate. Anyway, so that that is a, a pretty representative example, at least of my experience so far, with the um, ground strike stuff. It works well. It's superficially fairly similar to Enemy Unknown, but it does have a little bit of a learning curve associated with it. Um, sure, the autopsy has come back. That's cool. Um, we could research alien biology, but I kind of don't want to. I kind of just want to finish off these ones first. Uh, and that's okay, but again, I might be making terrible mistakes there. I, I haven't really been keeping up with my base too much, so I don't know if maybe in, you know, two months of in-game time, we're gonna find ourselves vastly outmatched by the aliens or something. So the last thing I want to show off is a little bit of, uh, some extra alien combat here. Sorry, not alien combat, but, um, uh, aerial combat. I shouldn't have gone past that, actually, because we can, uh, build some stuff if we want to. Like, for example, maybe now we want to build a, um, rocket launcher. A vehicular weapon, so we'll just start this up. Um, we can give this, you know, maybe two workers, like so, and then it'll take 15 days to complete. So we do have some manufacturing that's going to be finished soon. Uh, new kinds of aircraft that we can eventually use to hopefully have a better chance to take out enemies, uh, enemy aircraft that we come across, or spacecraft, I guess is the case may be, as well as vehicles that I think are related to ground support in a way, uh, which is interesting because I've never actually uh, been able to, or in Enemy Unknown, there isn't really like a ground support tab or anything like that. So I'm interested to see what this uh, entails, but I probably won't get to it over the course of this video. So uh, let's just, again, make the time move a little bit faster here. We'll probably intercept a, a UFO at some point over the next few days. So my overall impressions of Xenonauts, I just, I, I like it so far. I'm not feeling confident enough in my overall opinions to make a definitive yay or nay statement on this game yet. I'm gonna give it some more time in the cooker, I'm gonna come back when it's closer to release. Uh, but as an awareness thing, feels very, uh, xcom -y, and I mean that in a very positive way. It seems like, you know, maybe the sandbox side of, if, to make the analogy using the sandbox side of things, it feels more dwarf fortressy than like Minecrafty. Like the customization, uh, and the possibility, the possibilities for, um, kind of tailoring things to your own agenda, or as you see fit, your own strategy, seems higher than something like XCOM Enemy Unknown. So, you know, if XCOM Enemy Unknown is more like Minecrafty, a little bit more accessible, uh, this seems more meat and potatoes, like it's got a lot of functionality. So I, I think there's definitely a place for, for both of these uh, to exist, for sure. Uh, so there's probably a way that I can, like, give that airplane a hangar or something like that and use it in the next aerial combat uh, arena. Hopefully that comes about soon. Usually it's been pretty quick. Um, Pretty fast and furious with uh, alien interceptions here. Occasionally there will also be events that you can see in like the bottom left here, uh, which basically are just flavor text as far as I know. Um, we can't build a base, I think. Building bases, um, yeah, it takes extra money. There we go, so we've detected a UFO. Let's intercept it, and we'll use Foxtrot 1, which is our new uh, interceptor. So we'll, we'll launch it. It's faster. Um, so we should be able to get it, and we're, yeah, we are over land in the glorious frozen north of Canada. Uh, so let us engage it right now. We could tail it and maybe take it out someplace else, but I'm going to try to engage it right here. So this is the other kind of interface that you'll be seeing a lot, or I've seen a lot of, uh, at least in Xenonauts. So uh, it's like a tactical aircraft battle here. The scout actually shot down one of my planes earlier. I probably should have sent more planes to deal with it. Um, so, you know, we, we can uh, issue it some uh, commands if we want to. Uh, oh, 
I didn't mean to click that. Uh, but instead, I'm just going to let the AI fight it, and we'll see how they do. Looks like they landed a hit there. We're out of ammo. I don't know how I feel about that. Please let this down the alien spacecraft. Beautiful. I mean, our alien, or our craft got destroyed as well. But we also managed to take out the enemy spacecraft. So that was, I would call that a draw, I suppose. And I guess I don't get an opportunity to use my ground strike. Uh, because we kind of lost signal with them where it happened. But anyway, there you go. I'm going to pause it here. This is Xenonauts. A uh, lot of customization. It is, uh, as of yet, a little bit lacking in the presentation department, and the interface takes some getting used to. It's definitely something you're going to have to invest uh, at least a couple of hours with, uh, if you're not familiar with the original XCOM games anyway, uh, in order to kind of get a foothold for what's going on, and probably more than that to become anything close to resembling a master. That being said, uh, very intriguing title so far. I'm probably not going to spend too much time playing this off-camera after doing this video, until it gets a little bit further along in development, because I would hate to ruin this for myself by getting kind of an early impression on the game. Uh, I would rather just join in again uh, when it gets a little bit closer to release and is hopefully a little bit more polished and ready for casual scum like myself to kind of get involved as opposed to simply uh, XCOM diehards. That being said, 20 bucks on Steam, price is right, I would say, for a game uh, with this kind of strategic depth and heft. Uh, so consider this a, a mixed signal on Xenonauts so far, but I definitely feel like this has the potential to be uh, something that I could spend a lot of time with. Uh, as it gets closer and closer to release. So as always, there will be a link to the store page uh, to pick this up on Steam. Again, buyer beware. This is uh, a in-development product. No guarantee, I guess, that uh, the, the quality that you're seeing right now is going to be indicative of its finished quality. I can't imagine that it would get worse, because that would be kind of silly for extra development to make the game actually worse in the long run. Uh, but again, everything you see here is a work in progress and possibly not even representative of the final product. So keep that in mind, but if you are interested, 20 bucks gets you access to the game on Steam. I have no idea when the final release date is, but I will check up with the game uh, when that time does indeed come. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.